ले तमाम
कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम राम 
कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Rama, Hare Rama. 
श्याम सुंदर राधा श्याम सुंदर राधे राधा श्याम सुंदर राधा श्याम सुंदर राधे श्याम सुंदर राधा श्याम सुंदर राधे जय कृष्ण बलराम कृष्ण बलराम कृष्ण बलराम जय कृष्ण बलराम जय कृष्ण बलराम कृष्ण बलराम कृष्ण बलराम जय कृष्ण बलराम जय गौरिता 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 जय जय प्रभु 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 नीता गौरा हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नीता गौरा हरि बोल नीता गौरा हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नीता गौरा हरि बोल जय ओम जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हिंस प्रभु जगाचार्य स्तोत्र शिष्ण ग्रेस अवल चरणारी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिला प्रभुपाद की इस्कान खांडाचार्य शिला प्रभुपाद की जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हंस प्रवे जगाचार्य स्तोत्र सिद्धान ग्रेस शिला भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर महाराज की आनंद कोटि वैष्णव रिंद की नामाचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम सिकाओ श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधा शिवाश्री गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिर गोवर्धान की श्री वृंदावन धाम की मैप नवदीप धाम की जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की द्वारका धाम की गंगा मई की जमुना मई की भक्ति देवी की तुलसी महारानी की सामवेत भक्त बिंद की जय श्री श्री गौणिताई की जय श्री श्री कृष्ण बलराम जी की जय श्री श्री राधा श्याम सुंदर जी की जय नसीम देव भगवान की जय शिला प्रहलाद महाराज की जय शिला प्रभुपाद की जय निकाय गौर के मनंद
कृष्ण देव भगवान की जय प्रहलाद महाराज की जय श्री प्रहलाद Hey Krishna, welcome everyone. Anyone coming here for their very first time today? Party, you've been here before. Anybody? Yes. Where are you girls coming from? Okay, very nice. This is your temple now. You're so close. Very good. Well, welcome. And if if you are coming for the first time, if you um go to the lobby on the way out, they'll give you a book to take home with you today. So our feast is sponsored today by Dr. Yoga and Kamala Sundram in uh, memory of their son Nathan. And um, Kamala and and Yoga have been coming to our temple for many years. They're, they well they, I think they just moved to Jacksonville but they were in South Georgia but they were coming here regularly. Very very wonderful members of our uh, congregation. And Kamala just had a major surgery so we're asking everyone when we make prayers for the whole family please think of her and her quick recovery, full recovery from her surgery. Hare Krishna. Hare So here's what's coming up this week. Saturday, the 13th, this coming Saturday, is the um, annual St. Augustine Rathiatra. The parade leaves from the plaza at exactly 9:30 a.m. They're very strict. We're going to take off right on time, so don't be late. Give yourselves plenty of time to drive there to find parking. Um, the procession ends at 11 a.m. back at the plaza, so we kind of make a loop around on all the main roads. They block traffic for the Roth cart. It's really wonderful. And um, there'll be cultural presentations at, on the gazebo stage from 11:30 to 12:30. When you get back um, after the parade is finished, when you get back to the plaza, they'll be serving prasadam there. There'll be a book tent if you'd like to help distribute Prophet's books. You can see Sri Vrindavan and let her know. And then there's a Hari Nam chanting party that goes down St. George Street, a very popular tourist uh, street, from one till three. So you can make a whole day of it. There's a lot to do there, um, and it's. Oh, Always a lot of nice tourists in St. Augustine, and they're always curious who we are, what we're doing. So it's a great opportunity to tell more people about Krishna consciousness. And I want to mention that this past Saturday, there was a rathiyatra in the Spring Parade downtown Tallahassee. This this rathiyatra is like invitation only. Bhadra arranges just the younger uh, generation of devotees to be leading that parade and dancing in front. And it's a beautiful presentation of rathiyatra and Krishna. Consciousness, and we we've often won the best float. For, for, we don't know yet. They sent you an email later to see who won, but um, it's really a beautiful endeavor, and we thank Bajra very much and uh, for making that happen. Uh, next Sunday, so Saturday, Rathiyatra Saint Augustine. Sunday, it's Ram Nomi, so we celebrate the uh, appearance of Lord Ramachandra on that day. We're going to have our regular Sunday program like we do every week, and there'll be an Abhishek tent outside. Beautiful deities of Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman, and everyone can take part in Abhishek for those deities, in bathing the deities. Then the following Saturday, the 20th of April, is the annual community yard sale. So you can get your spring cleaning done now. Bring over the stuff you don't want anymore. Uh, to set it up is $15. Those donations go to the temple. And there's going to be nice homemade prasadam for sale there. There's a big free table also. So if you don't want to stay to sell your things, but you don't want your things anymore, bring it over, put it on the free table. It's a nice opportunity for devotees to come and see if there's something there they might like, and they don't even have to pay for it. We also uh, let the greater community know about this because we're so many families here. So it's a nice chance for them to come in and see a little bit about um, you know our our property, what we do, who we are. It's a nice event. Um, and then on the 20th, 20th and 21st, Mahatma Prabhu is doing an online Japa class. So the information will be in this week's newsletter if that's something you're interested in. And the Vrindavan Institute for Higher Education is starting an online Bhakti Sadachar course. So this will be a course that just deals with foundational training in Krishna consciousness. Because anymore, so many people coming to 
the, the movement have never lived in an ashram. They don't have the experience of getting trained like many of us were trained in Krishna consciousness. So it's a course designed especially for, for them, especially people who work all week long. They don't get to come to the temple that much. In the course, they'll be learning about the exemplary life of Srila Prabhupada, the nine processes of bhakti, Vaishnava etiquette, the science of the soul, reading reform, managing our interactions with the internet, hmm, our daily prayers, principles of freedom, Kali Yuga Dharma, the lives of Vaishnava Acharyas, and many more things. It's a, it's a very in-depth course. They will um, teach you how to play kartals in Verdunga, offer obeisances, perform achman, apply tilak, wear Vaishnava attire, worship Tulsi Devi, how to offer your boga, make giwik, serve prasad. I mean, there's nothing you're not going to learn in this class, right? It starts on April 13th. It's a weekend class. It spans three modules of four months each. Okay, that's how you get to learn all this. It takes a year. So anyway, if it's something you'd like to do, you can register through our newsletter that's coming out on Tuesday. We also have just recently made a list of the online reading groups that are happening here in the community. There are so many fantastic ongoing reading groups. It's a wonderful way to study Prabhupada's books in association of other devotees. You can just go to our website, alachuatemple.com, and then under the tab that says community, uh, they'll, you'll, you'll go there and there's a list of all the reading groups. And if I have missed any reading groups and you go to check it out and see that there's one you're involved in, just let us know and we'll add that to it. All right, finally, today we are happy to have Parts of Prabhu giving class today. He's visiting um, from British Columbia, Srila Prabhupada's disciple. He and his wife came this weekend to give a seminar on relationships. So we're very happy, Prabhu, to have you here and to hear from you this evening. How are you? for the first time for the Sunday Feast? Especially my first time.
Krishna Prashtaya Bhutta Dei Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swam Anitinamani Namaste Sarasati Devi Ngoravani Pacharani Nirvashesha Sunyavadi Prasad Chade Shatanani Omaganatya Madanda Shadjanan Janan Shilakaya Chakshuram Militam Jaina Tazmai Shri Guruvena Maha Mukam Kaurati Vachalam Pangam Manga Yategirim Vyakri Patam Maham Vande Shri Guru Dinataranam before I begin, I would like to express my appreciation to the devotees of the community here. Um, the DTs are extremely beautiful, uh, very gorgeously dressed, and decorated, and the flowers are beautiful. And I very much appreciate that because I was a head pajari for almost 20 years in Vancouver. And I'm well aware of what goes on in the background. There's devotees who spend hours making the garlands, making the vases, um, dressing the deities, making the decorations, cooking, making sweets, making giwiks, uh, cleaning the temple, cleaning the pajari room, sorting out the paraphernalia, uh, cleaning the temple, cleaning the bathrooms, looking after the temple grounds. There's like hundreds and hundreds of hours service every week that go into maintaining the deities and the temple, and their, t their grounds, and there's this huge investment of bhakti, this loving devotion that's invested in the deity and the temple. And when you come to the temple, you can't help but feel that. You can't help but feel that atmosphere. And anyway, I just want to express my appreciation to devotees because you can definitely feel the, the bhakti in the temple here, something very powerful. And... I want to thank you all for that. So I'm just going to read one verse from Bhagavad Gita 18.55. Bhakti mamma vijanati yavan yas chasmi tattvataha tato mam tattvato gyanatva vishite taranantaram One can understand me as I am, as a Supreme Personality of Godhead, only by devotional service. And when one is in full consciousness of me, by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, and his plenary portions cannot be understood by mental speculation, nor by the non-devotees. If anyone wants to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he has to take to pure devotional service under the guidance of a pure devotee. Otherwise, the truth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead will always be hidden. As already stated in Bhagavad Gita 7.25, Naham Prakasha Sarvasya, He is not revealed to everyone. No one can understand God simply by erudite scholarship or mental speculation. Only one who is actually engaged in Krishna consciousness and devotional service can understand what Krishna is. University degrees are not helpful. So actually, I just wanted to read, if I can find it, we read something very wonderful in the Sri Namamrita a few days ago. If I can find it.
I don't know if I can find it. I will give you the essence of it. <laughs> uh, in this one reading, Srila Prabhupada was describing the potency of the holy name. And Srila Prabhupada compared Krishna's holy name to a code. And sometimes you can have a code, and within that code, much information or much wealth can be contained. So Srila Prabhupada, he was describing that within the holy name, if you can unlock that code, you can understand all Krishna's pastimes, his paraphernalia, the nature of his truth, simply by that code of Krishna's names. And there was something very similar once. It was posted in Mayapur in the temple room. There was a big kirtan mela, and there were some quotes by Srila Bhakti Saranta Saraswati Thakur that were quite interesting. He said, the holy name of the Lord is more powerful than the Lord himself. He said, the, the holy name is more powerful than the owner of the holy name, more powerful than Krishna, and more merciful even than Krishna. The holy name is so powerful. And he also said that within the holy name, simply by chanting the holy name, all the intricacies of our philosophy can be understood simply by chanting the holy name. So that's actually a very, very powerful statement. Yet somehow it's in a code, and codes are very important. I remember once, and we all have probably bank cards, and you have a little code for your bank account. Well, I was in my or in Vrindavan once, and I was walking towards the cash machine, and I had a pin. I had a code that I'd been using probably for 12 years. And as I walked toward the machine, I was thinking, what if I forgot that pin? And I got to the machine, I couldn't remember the pin. <laughs> I, was, I was locked out. So in the same way, if we don't actually understand the code, we won't actually be able to enter into Krishna's pastimes fully. So this verse from Bhagavad Gita is explaining what that essence or the code is to actually fully understand Krishna. It's bhaktimam abhijanati. It's bhakti. And so we are extremely fortunate that we even come in contact with Srila Prabhupada. Um, sometimes when I travel and I see the wonderful things, devotees all over the world, um, I, I realize how that was all Prabhupada's vision. And I'm sure all of you read Prabhupada Leelamrita. It's mentioned briefly how uh, when Prabhupada was in New York 22nd, 22nd Avenue, he met some Jewish gentlemen, gentlemen who indicated that Prabhupada somehow seemed to know he would have these temples in the future. There's actually a backstory to that. I, I met this man in 1977. Uh, I just returned from India. Uh, we were with Srila Prabhupada, my wife and I, for Prabhupada's concluding pastimes. I actually had opportunity to spend uh, from four to 14 hours a day in Prabhupada's room, just focused on Prabhupada. After that, for three weeks, every single class was just Prabhupada Gita. It, it was amazing. Uh, then we returned to Canada. Uh, the first morning, I get up, I go to the temple. In the Prashad room, there's a, a Jewish gentleman sitting in the prasadam room on this prayer mat with, uh, I don't know what the Jewish hat's called. Yarmulke. Yarmulke. So he's sitting there. So naturally I thought, I'm just going to tell this man about Prabhupada. <laughs> so I sat down next to him and I started to tell him about Prabhupada. And he said, oh, I met Srila Prabhupada. And so I said, really? Tell me, tell me about this. So he told me how he used to work on the subway and sometimes he would take his lunch break and he would go to this Tompkins Square Park. And he said, he told me how often he would see Srila Prabhupada there, and he would watch Prabhupada. And he told me, he said, I swear, when Prabhupada would speak or chant, he said, it seemed like the birds were landing in the trees to listen to Prabhupada. And he said, generally the park was windy and there was papers blowing around. But he said, when Prabhupada was chanting or talking, it would become very still. And he also... Um, the backstory was that he had, I'll tell you some more about Prabhupada's association, but first I'll tell you how we ended up in Vancouver. He one day said to Srila Prabhupada, I'm going to go on a world tour. And he said, Srila Prabhupada pointed out into the park and said, one day you'll come back to Krishna. 
So he went on a world tour for 10 years, traveled all over, never encountered any devotees, uh, never encountered any books, never heard anything about Prabhupada's movement. Somehow he ended up in Vancouver and somehow he ended up sitting in front of me in the Vancouver temple. And so he started telling me about his experience with Prabhupada and he said, he started telling me, so he hadn't seen or heard anything about Prabhupada or Prabhupada's books, nothing for 10 years. He started telling me how Prabhupada would preach to him. And he started describing the process of creation, the three Vishnus, in this amazing detail. It almost sounded like he was reading from one of Srila Prabhupada's purports. And the man started crying and he said, I cannot believe I can remember this after all these years. He said, I cannot believe this. And then he started to tell me how uh, he said he had great respect for Prabhupada and he, you know, he had thought about becoming a disciple but somehow he went in this world tour. And then he also said one day he's sitting with Prabhupada on the bench and he said Prabhupada points out into the park and says I have temples and printing presses and farms and disciples all over the world. <laughs> and Mr. this man Reuben he said he didn't know what to think because, you know, Prabhupada, there's only a few hippies following him, small temple. He respected Prabhupada, but he did not know what to think. So Prabhupada said, I have these temples, farms, and printing presses. And then he said, we simply have to move. He said, we simply have to move through time and have faith in Krishna. And so this man, he went on his world tour, ended up in the Vancouver temple. And, and right at that time, they published the other bar's video, what was it called, The Hare Krishna World? And he saw how what Prabhupada had said became manifest. So Prabhupada was a, a visionary like no other visionary. Um, uh, what's his name? Walt Disney was a kind of visionary. He had a vision to make some thing that was entertaining for people and to make money. And, and now his vision is manifest as like Disney World or whatever. Prabhupada's vision was not like that. Prabhupada had this extraordinary vision. How can we understand that Prabhupada could foresee, could foresee these things? And they have come to pass. So in one sense, we're actually sitting here and we're living in the vision of Srila Prabhupada. It's, it's a very sacred and extraordinary thing. And also, Prabhupada was very extraordinary. I want to read you something. You may have seen it before. Uh, Govinda Dasi, she had a trunk which had some news clippings she had collected over the years. And there was one news clipping that she had found sometime in the 70s that uh, an astrologer had written about Srila Prabhupada. It's quite, it's quite interesting. So the chart, the person describing Srila Prabhupada, he said, nobody can read this chart. If they say they can, they are simply lying. This personality comes and goes by his own sweet will. He is not bound by anybody or anything. The stars are lined up perfectly. There is no question of karma. He is working directly under the will of God. And when he writes, this is interesting, his pen does not have ink in it. His pen has fire. <laughs> that his pen has fire in it which will burn the ignorance of the whole world. So Prabhupada, <laughs> and we see, how we're all here because of Prabhupada's books and Prabhupada's mission. It's, it's actually inconceivable. Uh, sometimes you hear there was this uh, legend for hundreds and hundreds of years about something called a philosopher's stone. I'm sure all the Harry Potter <laughs> fans know but Harry Potter and philosophers they were seeking some kind of thing called Philosopher's Stone. So the Philosopher's Stone was some legend that there was some way or some stone that could grant you immortality could grant you immortality and if we really reflect on it um, Srila Prabhupada's books are literally the Philosopher's Stone because by reading and assimilating and understanding Srila Prabhupada's books uh, literally, we can touch the eternal. We can come to understand the supreme eternal personality of Godhead. Um, so his words are extremely, extremely powerful. And I think it's important for us to realize how fortunate we are and how we've come into contact with something with so much potency and so much power that sometimes it's, it's easy to miss because we're so close to it. And And... 
I think we were discussing a few days ago about the importance of reading Srila Prabhupada's books with attention. And sometimes it's hard to give that rapt attention. Uh, I know myself, myself sometimes I might read for half an hour and not remember one thing I read. Not remember one word. But somehow when I close the book, I just feel uplifted. I just feel uplifted that something powerful has touched me. And sometimes when you read Srila Prabhupada's books, you'll find some of those touchstones with very powerful indicators how we can get closer to Krishna. And I think one thing that I've always found as an extremely powerful instruction that Srila Prabhupada gave, a, a gem that's buried within his books, is in the, the 14th chapter describing the modes of material nature. Where Krishna is explaining how uh, the modes of material nature, they, they com compete for supremacy. And he gives a detailed description of the modes of material nature. And also throughout the Bhagavad Gita, there's descriptions of how the modes manifest in different activities. And that helps us to understand maybe where we are in terms of the modes of material nature. And so in, the, in one purport, Srila Prabhupada describes how, you know, sometimes goodness predominates and then ignorance and passion can pull us down or we might be in ignorance and goodness might elevate us or we, we might be in passion and then ignorance might pull us down so Prabhupada's describing there's this competition for supremacy of the modes but very significantly there Prabhupada says he says however by practice one can develop the mode of goodness by practice and that's an extremely important point. By practice, we can develop the mode of goodness. And why is that important? Uh, Prabhupada describes in that uh, purport that by coming to the mode of goodness, we can come to Sudashatra or pure goodness or the, or the Vasudhi platform. And on that platform of Sudashatra, then we can actually fully understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And elsewhere, elsewhere he writes, that, I mean, literally, it's described that you can't even perform devotional service until you get rid of passion and ignorance. So you might wonder, well, how can we... I'm in passion and ignorance, so how can I be doing devotional service? We're, we're very fortunate that we have the association of Prabhupada, and simply by our endeavor to serve him, even though we may be tinged with so many lower modes, because of our endeavor to serve Srila Prabhupada, Krishna accepts whatever service we render. And that's an important thing to remember. But again, it's important to remember that we don't want to take advantage of that and just not bother to, to progress, but to try to understand what that means to practice the mode of goodness. And uh, my wife and I have been here for about a week talking to different devotees, and we've conducted a, conducted a seminar about Grihasta life. And sometimes I get asked, well, what's, what's the essence of what you do? And so I, sometimes I reply, we teach couples how to fight in the mode of goodness. <laughs> how many people here have ever had a, an argument or disagreement with someone? Okay. <laughs> Pretty much everyone. Um, how many have had a disagreement with someone uh, right in front of Radhashama Sundar? Oh, so he's a Brahmin, he's honest. But it's, it's not something generally we would do because we know Krishna is there. Krishna is there. So sometimes there's a disconnect between our consciousness and activities in the temple and our consciousness activities in different situations, in our homes, and especially with people we are familiar with. It can be easy to, to slip into the lower modes. And again, it's important to remember that Srila Prabhupada, he wanted us to be Krishna conscious how many hours a day? 24. So he wanted us to, to practice that, to practice that mode of goodness. So uh, having a, um, a disagreement at temple is probably in the lower modes. Actually, Lord Kapila Dave, he, he talks about deity worship and the modes of material nature. I always found it interesting because I was a Pajari for such a long time. But I'll just read you what Lord Kapila Dave said about worshiping the Lord in the lower modes. I'm just going to start here. So Lord Kapila Dave says, I am present in every living entity as the super soul. If someone neglects or disregards that super soul everywhere and engages himself in the worship of the deity in the temple, that is simply imitation. 
one who worships the deity of Godhead in the temples, but does not know that the Supreme Lord as Paramatma is situated in every living entity's heart, must be in ignorance and is compared to one who offers oblations into ashes. If you don't realize Krishna's in everyone's heart, it's like the fire sacrifice, you pour ghee in the fire and nurtures the fire and it flares up. If you just pour it on ash, the room just fills with this smoke. So he's saying that's what happens if we don't realize Krishna is everywhere. One who offers me respect but is envious of the bodies of others and is therefore a separatist, never attains peace of mind because of his inimical behavior towards other living entities. My dear mother, even if he worships with the proper rituals and paraphernalia, a person who is ignorant of my presence in all living entities never pleases me by the worship of my deities in the temple. So those are very, very powerful statements and, and something to reflect on. Uh, because sometimes our behavior does slip in the lower modes and sometimes uh, we do have negative exchanges with their god brothers, god sisters, friends, family members. And so again, why, why is that? Why do we slip into those modes? And again, it's because we don't really realize that the person I'm angry with, that Krishna is actually, I'm getting mad at you, but Krishna's in your heart watching that spectacle. So what does, what does Krishna feel about that? And why don't we realize that? And again, the realization comes by bhakti. So if we engage in bhakti, we get the understanding, but at the same time, if we commit offenses, our, our bhakti becomes a little... Um, the progress becomes slowed down if we commit offenses. So it's extremely important to realize the importance our relationships have in our spiritual life and the importance of having healthy, respectful, loving relationships. That is very essential for our progress in spiritual life. And I think everyone is going to have some, at least a little picture of Krishna in their home. Like anyone not have a picture of Krishna in home? Probably a little panchatattva, Picture of Krishna, maybe Gopal, Didi, Gornitai, some form of the Lord. So Krishna is there. It's not that Radhashama Sundar are here and Krishna is not in your home. Krishna is in your home. Even in the picture, Krishna is there. And I had this experience once of Krishna's potency in a picture. Um, many years ago, about 1976, there was a beautiful painting of Panchatattva painted on the exterior wall of the Mayapur compound. And my godbrother took a photograph of it, and he, he gave me a little 8x10 copy of that. Very beautiful picture. It later got uh, destroyed by a flood. So I took that little picture to a framing shop in downtown Vancouver, and I picked out a frame. It's an 8x10 picture. The frame with the picture was probably 11 by 14 And they said it would be ready in two weeks. So I waited two weeks. I get the phone call. I go back, I give the lady the stub receipt, and she said, I'm just going to go in the back and look for your picture. And she went in the back and she said, I'm sorry, I can't find you. I can't find your order. And I told her, well, I, I received a phone call. And she said, let me look again. So after five minutes, she came out looking rather frustrated. And she said, I'm sorry, I can't find it. I'll call the man who did the work because he's not working today. So she gets on the phone, hangs up, goes in the back room, she comes out with this box, I, I'm honest, the Radha Shama Sundar, it was this wide, that high, and this thick. And I said, well, I don't think that can be my order, because it was just a little picture. I said, why don't we open this up, because I don't want to go all the way back on the bus and have to come back again if it's the wrong picture. So we open up the box, and there's like cardboard, and foam rubber, and paper, and there's this little picture of Panchatattva. <laughs> and the lady said, she said, this man realized this was something and extremely valuable. So here's just some ordinary carmi, quote unquote. He has this epiphany about a little <laughs> picture of Lord Chaitanya. Such a powerful thing that he went to all that extra effort. So we have those pictures, and we have these deities in home, and Krishna is actually there. He's with us. And 
It's especially important for us as grihastas or even living in the Brahmacharya Ashram or Brahmacharya Ashram to, to realize that Krishna, he's here, especially here. I might say the wrong thing or get a little angry. Um, one skill we teach the couples is that, okay, so let's say you have some ne negative exchange. Well, you can just ask to do a rewind. You can do a take two on it. You can try to do that in a better way. Can we redo this? I mess up. Let me try this again. You can correct. When we go a little off course in our relations, we can make a correction. And it's extremely important um, you know, for our spiritual advancement and also, I think, for the health and the potency of our society. We see Srila Prabhupada, his, his wor written words, his spoken word, his thoughts and deeds were all totally congruent. There wasn't like a Prabhupada in the temple and Prabhupada outside the temple. Prabhupada was congruent in, his, in his, his writing, his speaking, his words, his deeds was completely congruent. Um, we might go to someone on the street and say, Chant Hare Krishna, be happy. And because we're uh, trying to follow Srila Prabhupada's instructions, there's going to be some potency there. Actually, the first devotee I met did not know anything didn't know anything. I tried to ask him some questions and um, actually the first devotee I met, first two devotees, Pundri Kaksham and Simha, you may know them, um, they said, sorry I can't talk to you, we're going to the Beacon Hill Park for Prashadam. <laughs> I've been searching for devotees for some time. They said, sorry we can't talk to you, we want to have lunch. If you go down the street, there's another devotee there. So there's this brahmacharya. I eagerly go up to him. I try. I had these burning questions I wanted to ask him. And he made some attempt to answer, which didn't really sound clear to me. And then he just said, here's a book. It'll answer all your questions. Elevation to Krishna. He gave that to me. For some reason, I opened up my wall. I gave him everything that was in my wall. I don't know why. I gave him everything in my wall. And, and then I tried to ask him some more questions. And he said to me, uh, my Brahmin said I should only talk to someone for not more than two minutes. And then he just started walking away. <laughs> and I just thought, I've been waiting for these people for so long. Here they are, and no one will talk to me. So he's walking away, but something happened. And he was making some attempt to serve Srila Prabhupada, even though um, he was lacking in so many ways. But somehow Krishna carried what he lacked. Because at that moment when he was walking away, um, have you ever been very close to a thunderbolt? Very close to a big lightning bolt? There's just incredible boom. And everything after that just seems completely still. That's what it felt like at that moment when he was walking away. It was on this busy street corner and it was like there was a boom and all that existed for me in the world at that moment was him slowly walking away. And his red Sika was blowing in the wind and his his robes were kind of blowing. It almost reminded me when you're reading the Bhagavatam when Krishna's dhoti sometimes it moves like saffron, pollen particles. It was just something mystical. And somehow I had this realization that he was the representative of a very great man. It was such a powerful thing. Uh, so even though he didn't know anything, still he had potency. So also ourselves, we may be lacking in so many ways, and our, our preaching is still very, very effective. But just imagine if we could be more fully congruent. You know, we tell people, chant Hare Krishna, be happy, but I go back in my ashram and maybe I'm not so happy. We're a little incongruent. So it's actually our duty to become fully Christian conscious, to learn how to have relationships in, in the mode of goodness, healthy, productive, um, respectful relationships. And then we'll develop that congruence and our words will actually become more powerful, more empowered, because we have that kind of congruence. And Srila Prabhupada, he, he wanted us, he wanted us to become Krishna conscious, he wanted us to be happy. And that's a very important thing to always remember. And there are those kind of gems of wisdom in Srila Prabhupada's books that you can kind of pick them out sometimes and you know, just hold them very close to your heart. And they, they can help you advance in Krishna consciousness. And those are the things we should uh, look for and cherish and try to nurture, nurture in our um, communities. Um, here I will say I'm very... Um, 
I felt very welcome in the community, and generally I see the daughters are very happy. And I'm sure always in all communities and everyone, including myself, sometimes there's times when uh, there's challenges, but we can also be, we may not be happy when there's a challenge, but we can see that we have a very meaningful goal in our life. And even though it may be challenging, that gives us the fulfillment to work through the different challenges we face in times of difficulty. And we all face times of difficulty. And even in the times of difficulties, um, we can very much take shelter of Radha Shama Sunda in the temple. And in Bombay, they were going through many difficulties trying to get the permits and dealing with Mr. N. And uh, some devotees were saying once they were just so frustrated and depressed, but they didn't seem to be making any progress. And they would just kind of be standing in Mongol Arctic at the back, like not dancing. And they said that Prophet said to them that. I can't remember exact words. That he said, even, oh, even if you don't get along with the authorities, even if you don't get along with the government, you should still dance to Kirtan. So we have, um, again, this great fortune that Srila Prabhupada has given us, the absolute truth. He's given us the key to understand the absolute truth and the ways and means to develop our Krishna consciousness in, in ways that uh, can help us progress very quickly. So I'm going to stop there and see if anyone has any questions or comments. Question at the back there. Could you give us um, the slope where, where it's written, the text is written from the King of Day? Yes. It starts on... Uh, third canto, 29th chapter, verse 21. Thank you. Thank you. Mataji, the back has a question. A uh, back row by the window. I was going to ask your wife, but since you, no one else is asking, I've read the Lilamrita and that when you began to tell about the person to whom Prabhupada had said there will be so many temples, mm -hmm. I'm saying they're saying subway conductor, Mr. Rubin. And then as you told more, I realized, oh my God, he's the man that talked to him and why it's in the Lilamrita for me to know. Is that how it became? Um, we. Well, I actually met him. I was actually the first one to meet him after he came back from his trip, and we arranged for him to be interviewed, I think it was by Satsurup Maharaj. Or one of his people. Thank you very much. That's such a powerful story. I'm a little short-winded today because we just finished speaking for about six hours at a seminar. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Mataji in yellow has another question. Our relationships with devotees are very important. So what happens if, let's just say, we do offend devotees and we apologize, but we feel like they haven't sincerely forgiven us? Like, how does that affect us? Um, <laughs> if we've tried to the best of our ability and they haven't forgiven us, we, we've done the best we can, we've, we've done our duty as far as possible. And so I don't think there's any reaction we get from that. And, and from the flip side, it's very important to forgive and not uh, hold those kind of grudges. Because the reason we make offenses is somehow we fall in the modes of material nature. We may be in the modes of material nature now, five minutes later, you're out of that mode. And sometimes we hold grudges for something someone said or did for years. And the person who said that has completely changed. They no longer think that. But you become trapped within that, um, that criticism of that. You end up criticizing the offender and become trapped in that. So forgiveness is actually a very important quality of the Vaishnava to be able to forgive someone who offends us. Uh, 
Chris? At the beginning, you were you talking about the holy name being more powerful than Krishna himself and more merciful, I think you said? That's, for Shila, that's what was written on the wall. It was a tribute oh. to Srila Bhaktisar and to Saraswati Thakur. Do I understand that? No. <laughs> yeah, I, one time I, I was chanting and, uh, and suddenly I got this realization that like all knowledge, you know, all transcendental knowledge, you know, because Krishna, or Lord Chaitanya says, isn't it, I've invested all my transcendental potencies in the holy name. And I just got a realization for a moment that all knowledge is, is coming through chanting. Mm. And it, it was really amazing. Thank you. It's like a little zip drive. <laughs> now, like, you have a micro micro USB card that's like a tetrabyte. <laughs> so within the holy name much is contained. Thank you for your class and thank you for the seminar. Um, I was just I'm just trying to understand you said when Prabhupada said that um, when the politics and the management you, you feel affected still dance. So just keeping that mindset, I'm just thinking when a superior really hurts, like you feel really hurt by something that was done or said, um, how do you how do you not take offense and at what point do you feel, it, uh, do you accept part of it as your, like your karma? Mm -hmm. and, um, and at what point should you actually reveal your heart or do something like I'm having a hard time finding that balance or mm -hmm. to. Um, as you say, it might be good sometimes to go to the individual and, and reveal to them that you know, what, what you said was really painful for me. That can be helpful. And at the same time, we understand who someone who's like a, a very advanced devotee, uh, they'll be unfazed by that. And like we gave that example of Jada Bharta, who was insulted by King Rahugana, and it was described, he, he just felt a little wave of dissatisfaction. He was unaffected. But he is on an extremely high transcendental platform to be unaffected like that. So we do get affected. And it's also described that by, by tolerating offenses, uh, all our impiety is burned off. We become purified by tolerating offenses. Uh, and it's actually described by, in the Mahabharata, and Yudhisthira was asking about what if someone is really like blaspheming you in a public assembly, he's probably referring to like Shishapal or Duryodhana. So what, what happened, what should you do if someone is like just blaspheming you in a public assembly? And there's several replies uh, by different sages to that question. And the essence was that if someone's blaspheming you in a public assembly, if you tolerate their blasphemy with patience um, is described that whatever impiety you have within yourself is burnt off and transferred to them. And by you tolerating their offense, their pious activities can be transferred to you. And he also described for someone who's extremely blasphemous, um, uh, uh, Bhishma Dev said, there's no point in saying anything because whatever you say they'll use against you. So in, that, in those circumstances, uh, you can just tolerate and uh, make advancement. In some circumstances, as we're just saying, that someone may say something that's a little hurtful. You can tell them, especially if it's some close relationship. They may not realize that hurt you. You can, you can express them to that. You know, in this situation, when you said that, I just felt disempowered or, or whatever. And, and often that can help to cure those situations. And in close relationships also, in our friendships, uh, it's always likely there's going to be some kind of situations where that do kind of grade us the wrong way. And in the broader pictures, those occurrences are actually arranged by Krishna to help us develop humility, tolerance, and patience. Um, one of our God sisters went to Mayapur once for Navadweep Mandal Parikrama. And she was telling us that everywhere she went, all the tirtas, she was praying, please help me become humble, tolerant, and patient every place that she prayed that. And she said the next day, she was traveling with one small party of about a dozen ladies, and a new individual, new lady, came into their little association. 
and she said it was the most annoying person she'd ever met. And she said, she just started thinking, of Krishna, why is this happening? I spent all this money to come to Mayapur, I'm trying to become peaceful, and this happens. And she said, it just hit her that this is what I was praying for. I was praying to become tolerant and patient, and Krishna just was giving me an opportunity. And she told us she changed her outlook on that person and tried to make friends with her, and it all worked out. And she said, it's okay after that. But Krishna arranges those situations, and I think that's also important to remember that those situations are actually to help us. And I think myself, I used to think, and sometimes I think maybe we all think that Krishna one day is just going to turn on a magic switch or have some magic wand and everything is just going to be a breeze, we're going to be equiposed and peaceful, nothing's going to be a problem. My experience does not happen that way. You have the opportunities to practice humility, tolerance and patience. And we're just doing a Grahasta seminar and Grahasta is living together closely with kids. You have immense opportunity to practice humility, tolerance and patience. And, and by, by that practice, uh, the connotation of tolerance is gritting the teeth, bearing it out, and sometimes it can be like that. Sometimes it can be like that. However, if we can see, okay, um, this God brother here is giving me a real rough time. Actually, somehow, he's Krishna sent him, he's my good friend, Puranath. I actually, he's my good friend from all the way back in. If I can actually see, well, I actually love him. Then the Tolerance, when it's tempered with love, it becomes patience. It's a lot easier to be patient than, than teeth gritting tolerance. So if we can see Krishna is within everyone, we can see the good in everyone, and um, we can hate the sin, not the sinner, then it becomes easier to tolerate those things. Thank you very much. Akurnas, Prabhu. Just on the um, question of the Holy Name being more powerful, there's a verse in the, in the Nam Amrita by Rupa Goswami, I don't remember the Sanskrit and maybe somebody does, but it's saying that you have two forms, the, the person you designate and also the mm. name that designates. Mm. You know that the name is more powerful than the person because one can commit hundreds of offenses to the person who's mm. designated and be forgiven by serving your name with your voice. Hmm. Something like that, yes. And we have been given that gift by Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, sir. I, <clears throat> it's not a philosophical question. It's just a, it's just interest that you do a lot of traveling, I believe. You travel all over. So, um, which temples are the most exciting that you've been to? <laughs> um, the temple we're in at the moment. <laughs> and the next one before that. Uh, we've been 21 countries and I'll say everywhere we go, the temples are beautiful, the deities are amazing. And uh, sometimes people ask me, well, what's it like to be with Srila Prabhupada? What, what did it feel like? And I say, I might usually like to answer that what it felt like to be with Prabhupada was when I come to different temples and see how the devotees have invested so much devotion into the temples. And I said, that feeling is how I felt when I saw Srila Prabhupada personally. I just feel the same feeling and same potency. So it's not that Srila Prabhupada is not with us. Not with us. Prabhupada is actually on the Vyasa song. Actually, one gentleman one time, he, he said, I saw Srila Prabhupada. I said, really, where did you see Srila Prabhupada? He said, Vancouver Rath uh, I said, well, actually, Prabhupada never actually set foot in Vancouver. He said, no, no, no. I saw A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada on the Rath Yatra cart in Vancouver in the parade. So, I just said, yes, we <laughs> He did. He, he saw Prabhupada. He realized that. That the Murti and Prabhupada can reciprocate. But yes, this, um, but all temples are beautiful, that's a fact. But some are nice. Once again? I said all temples are beautiful, that's true. But some have more going on. More have more going on? Mm -hmm. 
But even the small temples are nice where there's not so much going on. There may be not as much, but sometimes there's a lot of devotion there. Um, we visited some places where there's these little, little small preaching centers, little outreach things, and the, that dynamic and feeling is still it's there. The same dynamic is there. It's very, it's very powerful, though it might seem smaller in terms of size. So I, some, I don't really think it's in terms of size, but it's really, again, it amounts to the bhakti that's invested, whether it's a huge project or a little project. And so, so which preaching centers are making devotees? <laughs> Beg your pardon? Which preaching centers are being very successful in making devotees? Um, I don't know which ones are the most, but I, you know, I will say that um, you know, where we have gone, there's been very novel ways that they're preaching Krishna consciousness and exposing people to Krishna. We ended up going on a 24-hour train ride through Siberia and ending up in this place called Omsk. And uh, I've been to Omsk too. Big friend? I have also been to Omsk. Yes, and and we got the best Govinda's restaurant in the world. Yes. <laughs> And you see they have these amazing, they have a very amazing, um, in Russia they have these um, Namahata programs, little groups, but some of the cities are so big it takes something like three or four hours to drive to Moscow, so they have little Sangha groups that they meet regularly and then every, uh, they make, if they make too many devotees, it starts to get too big, they start another group. And in Moscow they have something like over a hundred of these little Sangha groups. And every few months, some of them would come together and rent a big hall and have a festival. We went to one of those festivals. It was, it was amazing. And then every now and then they come to the big temple. So I, I would not dare to say if one is better than the other or doing more than the other. But I, I just appreciate, this, appreciate the sincerity that the devotees are uh, giving to their service to Prabhupada. Thank you. So I was told six o'clock was a good time to quit. So thank you all very much. Hare Krishna.
Thank you. 
Acharya, Asta Tare Sati Sushima, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Vijay, Chayo Mishnu Pad, Pai Mahamsa Paribraja Vajarja, Asta Tare Sati Sushima, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, Prabhupada Vijay, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Hindu Vijay, Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Vijay, Premisa Pahol Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adrit, Shri Dadhar Shri Vasudhi Go Bhakti Vindu Vijay, Shri Shri Rara Krishna Kopa Kapinath Shyamakunda Radha Kund Kiri Govadam Ki Chai Kirindam Dham Ki Chai Makuri Dham Ki Chai Chakanath Kuri Dham Ki Chai Kanga Maya Ki Chai Muna Maya Ki Chai Tulsi Devi Ki Chai Bhakti Devi Ki Chai Samaveta Bhakti Vind Ki Chai Nuram Veti Dham Ki Chai Go Premananda Hari Hari Boy All Glories to the Assembly of Devotees All Glories to the Assembly of Devotees all glories to the assembly devotees, all glories to Chidu and go down there.
Sri Singh Hade Bhagavan Ki Jai Bhakta Prahlad Maharaj Ki Sila Prabhupad Ki Itai Gouda Premanandi
Krishna Krishna Krishna
No. <laughs> 
हरे कृष्णा Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 
कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Okay. 
You want to shut this one off before you go on time? Okay. All right. All right. I'll leave this one off for you. All right. What about the Powerpoint Lights Roll Show? Okay? It's off. It's on here. All right. Keep going.
Doya Pablo Sia Tadja Siniva Lama Oh, 
Oh, my God. 